Welcome to Talking IoT, a series of short, enlightening conversations on what's happening across the Internet of Things. I'm your host, Silicon Labs Chief Marketing Officer Megan Leaders. Here with me today is Bluetooth SIG Senior Director of Market Development, Chuck Saban, and he's here to talk about Bluetooth location services. Welcome, Chuck. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate uh, being here. Absolutely. Well, let's get right into it um, and start off with our first question and, and start at a high level. What is Bluetooth location services? Why was direction finding developed to support location services in the first place? Yeah, that's a, that's a fair question. Um, I think it, it's easy to start off with the fact that Bluetooth location services is one of the fastest growing solution areas for Bluetooth technology. Uh, the that solution area will ship, it, it, shipments are probably going to double uh, in the next five years, growing from about 250 million annual shipments to about 560 million. So to really describe Bluetooth location services, you probably need to start with the use cases that, uh, and, and then sort of the features and technology that's used for those. Um, to really think about location services, it's really made up of four key use cases. Uh, personal item findings, things like your tags uh, for your keys, your wallet, your purse, you know, trying to find your personal items. Uh, there's digital key use cases for using your smartphone as a secure digital key for unlocking car doors, home office buildings, uh, and more. Uh, there's asset tracking for real-time location solutions, or RTLS, and this is used for tracking things like people, regardless of its tools or workers or medical equipment or patients. And then there's indoor navigation for uh, airports, malls, museums, stadiums, and conference centers. And direction finding is a part of the delivery of the location services technology from Bluetooth. There's RSSI, which is using the received signal strength. There's direction finding that uses angle of arrival and angle of departure of a signal. And then under development is something called channel sounding for high accuracy distance measurement uh, between two objects. And so each of these capabilities provides what's necessary to increase the overall level of accuracy for location services and for those solutions that I talked about before. Direction finding specifically increases the accuracy for many solutions that are associated with asset tracking or indoor navigation. So when you have fixed locators that are trying to identify and locate objects like assets using tags or people using uh, you know, other types of, of locators, you can use that throughout the facility and, and use direction finding to go from, let's say, meter level accuracy down to submeter, accu uh, submeter level accuracy. And so direction finding was ultimately developed by the market out of this need for more accurate commercial and industrial solutions for these types of asset tracking and indoor navigation solutions that you see in the market today. It's fascinating because you're talking about so many use cases today that have expanded beyond probably what the original intent was. And, and you probably have to describe often, what are those benefits that Bluetooth technology provides for direction finding and location service solutions? How do you quantify that for others? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, fair, uh, that's a fair comment. And, and I think the first thing I'd like to say with regards to that, and in, in what we hear a lot from the market, is around the developer flexibility. As I mentioned before, there's, there's different ways to implement uh, location services solutions. You can use RSSI, which is a little bit more of a course uh, accuracy in terms of your location. You then have direction finding that will get you to submeter, and then we're developing channel sounding, which will get you down to, you know, into below the meter, like into centimeter type level uh, accuracy. And so when you think about being able to tailor your solution, that's really one of the key benefits that Bluetooth technology ultimately brings. Because in some cases, you only need that course level. In other cases, you may need that more granular level of accuracy. And in yet in others, you may need highly accurate uh, um, solutions. But, you're, but inside of a location, you may have the need for all three. And what you really wanna do is tailor that solution based on the needs of that location or the needs of that use case. So being able to use a single technology to adjust to the needs of the situation where you can make your decisions based on things like performance, cost, complexity, ROI, ecosystem, et cetera, you, know, you can use one technology and tailor that against multiple different use cases and provide the most efficient system that is necessary for your location uh, and for your delivery. 
It is, again, you're, you've got my mind spinning in terms of the amount of use cases. And I would expect that even in these last couple of years, you've seen a shift in growth of Bluetooth applications that are being leveraged today. Where do you see the, that fastest growing market today? Well, if you're looking at it from a from a location solutions perspective, uh, or from that sorry that use case perspective that I was talking about before, you know, indoor location proximity services like digital key uh, tools, equipment, and asset tracking, along with personal tracking, sort of really round out the top five implementation opportunities. Now, with direction finding, as I mentioned before, indoor navigation and asset tracking and and personnel tracking solutions those all directly benefit from that particular capability in, in direction finding to overall increase the, or the accuracy and the satisfaction of the solutions that benefit from that capability. Now, if you're looking at it from a, from a market perspective, you know, more and more commercial and industrial facilities like warehouses and logistics are really turning to Bluetooth asset management solutions to optimize resource and inventory control. Um, asset tracking alone is going to ship over 128 million devices, Bluetooth-enabled devices in 2022 uh, alone. And if you look at other areas like medical, uh, actually this is an area that is, is uh, um, seeing a lot of growth, especially coming out of the pandemic, uh, because they need to better, have better utilization of their equipment. You know, 58% of medical equipment goes actually unutilized. Uh, and that, cre that creates a very high inventory cost for, uh, for hospitals and medical facilities. And so they're looking for applications that can help them optimize their equipment tracking and improve their efficiencies when they're, ha when they're in times of, of struggle and, and resource uh, um, constraint like we have been in over the last couple of years. So those are some of the big, big areas that we're seeing today. Yeah, that is a staggering number to, to just put behind the, the medical community of just perhaps stagnant devices that are sitting idle um, for a variety of reasons. And, and it does beg the question in my mind, when you think about where connected devices and the IoT industry is going, where, where do you see the most exciting developments coming over the course of the next couple of years? So, of course, Bluetooth has been a, a part of the IoT for quite some time, you know, whether or not it's for wearables and all of the other sort of connected devices and so on. But if you sort of bring it back into the location services aspect, you know, one of the things I see happening in the market is around, and I think is, is pretty exciting, is around this, what I would consider combined use cases. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, we have a habit of talking about the IoT use cases as if they're independent things. Right, I deploy tags for asset tracking. I deploy wearables for health and fitness. I deploy wireless network lighting control for energy and cost savings. And all of these things get talked about independently. But the, the fact is a simple infrastructure that's enabling, that is using wireless technology can actually enable multiple IoT use cases. Uh, the, the example here I'll use is taking, let's say, wireless network lighting control as an example. You know, here you have a grid of wireless luminaires in your building in the ceiling that are, are providing cost efficiencies and energy savings and so on. But it's also a grid that can be used to enable location services, right? That same radio that is being used in, the, in those luminaires can actually be used as locators for your location solution or your asset tracking solution. And, and it's that combination of solutions that you will see coming out in the market where people are maybe starting with one because that's what their need was, but then they're realizing now that they have wireless technology embedded throughout the, without, throughout the location, now they can utilize that for other solutions and for other, uh, um, for other benefits. And I think that's one of the key things that you're going to start seeing around the IoT is this combination of solutions, this combination of systems that you can gain out of using uh, wireless technology and and, uh, and and wireless radios. Yeah, it may sound trivial to say, but it, but it's so massive in concept. Is you're you're leveraging or maximizing the value truly that have been embedded in these devices for years, but how to connect them up and, and really leverage it together is what you're, what you're indicating perhaps maybe in the yeah. future. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Well, Chuck, thanks so much for being here today, sharing your insights, your thoughts, um, highlighting the benefits of Bluetooth location services. For more information on Silicon Labs Bluetooth, please visit our website at scilabs.com slash wireless slash Bluetooth. Thanks again, Chuck, for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the time. Take care.